Hey guys, it's Crystal from Crystico Design. Today we are going to work up the Trina cowl, which is a lightweight spring cowl that uses DK or lightweight number three yarn. Um, in the pattern I use bamboo pop and clover, but I don't have any of that today, so I am using this Barocco, um DK yarn that I use for one of my hat patterns. Summer Diamonds hat. It's a really nice um, cotton yarn, so it's lightweight. And my three 75 millimeter hook. I'm fairly certain that this pattern will work great with horse to weight yarn, and like a four or five millimeter hook, whatever um, is comfortable for you. Um, all right, so we are going to get started. It's a super simple car, uh, cowl, and you can actually make it into a scarf if you like because it's worked on the short end, and then we we're uh, working up the length, and then we're going to seam it together. So if you want to just carry on and, and make a long 60-inch scarf or longer, you can do that if you have enough yarn. Okay, so for this pattern, we are going to start with a chain of 24. So we'll just get a slip knot on our hook. And chain 24. Okay, I'm going to double check that count and then we'll get started. Twenty-four. Okay, we are going to single crochet in the second chain from our hook. So not this one, but the next one. I'm going to roll it over and I'm going to work into the back bump here. that skip chain does not count as a stitch it's just a turning chain and we are going to single crochet in the next chain as well then I'm going to chain three and skip three chains one, two, three. I'm counting the back bumps there. This will be the next chain I work in. I'm going to single crochet in that one. Then I'm going to keep repeating that sequence, starting with chain three, skip three, single crochet in the next. Chain three, skip three, single crochet in the next. Okay, that repeat happens until you are left with one chain at the end, and in the last chain we're going to place a single crochet. Okay, let me see here. Very nice. Now for row two, we're going to start with a chain three 
and I am going to start with a chain three alternative, which I'll show you real quick. So we turn our work. All right. So And I can link that up for you if you need a more step-by-step. -step. Now we're going to double crochet in that second single crochet in the row. And then we're going to skip one chain and place three double crochets in the next chain. So we made a group of three, so we're going to work into the middle one. Okay, so double crochet, so I gotta yarn over. Come on here. Okay, so three double crochets in the middle chain. Then we're going to skip the next three stitches, which means the last chain, the single crochet, and the first chain of the next group. And then we're going to repeat by placing three double crochets in the middle chain. Going under both loops here of our middle chain. I didn't sew that one up. Oh, okay, so we're going to keep repeating that across. Skip the last chain, skip the single crochet, skip the first chain. Place three double crochet in the second chain. Okay, so then here we have three stitches at the end, the last chain of our group, and then the two single crochets. So when we end, we put our, we, we already put our three double crochets in the, the center chain, then we're going to skip the last chain, and then we'll put one double crochet in each of the next two. So we're just doing the same thing we started with, mirroring that in. Skip the chain, double crochet in the first single crochet, and double crochet in the last single crochet. Okay, now row three is going to be a repeat of row one, but I'll go ahead and work it up for you since it's not off of our chain row. We'll be doing it off of our second row. So we start with a chain one that doesn't count and we'll single crochet in the same stitch. And then single crochet in the next stitch. 
and then chain three. Remember, we're working into these chains later, so try not to do them too tightly. And then we are going to skip these three double crochets we made. And we are going to single crochet in the space between clusters of double crochets. So here's our first three, and here's our second three. We're going to go right in this space and make a single crochet around here. Okay, chain three, skip three, go into the space make a single crochet. There we go. Okay, we'll repeat that now across. Chain three, not too tightly. Skip three double crochet. Work into the space in between clusters, making a single crochet there. Okay, then when we get to our last one, remember we have our, our cluster of three and then we have two double crochets on the end. So for this one, we are going to place, we're going to skip these three and then place two single crochets, one in each of the last two. Okay, I started this row previously with a chain three alternative. If you started with a regular chain three, that's totally fine. You're going to place your last single crochet in the third chain of that chain three. Okay, so there is your repeat on a regular row. Now we're going to go back to our row two and we're just going to keep repeating rows two and three for the length of our cowl. For this cowl I did 30 inches. Again, if you're interested in making this into a scarf and not seaming it together, then you can do it as long as you like. Usually a scarf needs to be at least 60 inches. For, uh, to be long enough for an adult. Okay, so let me go ahead and do row two again. Chain three, doing that alternative stitch here. There we go. And then we're going to double crochet in the next. We're gonna skip the first chain and in the second chain, we're gonna place our three double crochets. Again, I'm going under two loops to work all three of those. Okay, and then repeat that across. Skip one, two, three. Work three double crochets into the middle chain. Okay, so just keep repeating that and then you're going to go back and repeat row two. You can uh, rewind and check out that row if you need to watch me do that again. I'm going to work up a little bit so that I have enough to seam together and then I'll show you how to seam this into a cowl and you'll be good to go. Okay, so once you have worked up at least 30 inches or the length that you want to make your cowl, um, to seam it, we are just going to cut your tail. And I usually recommend at least double the length of what you need to seam. We're gonna seam this edge here. So I'm just gonna do that and then cut my yarn. I'm doing a little bit more than the double. And you'll need your tapestry or yarn needle and I'm going to pull my yarn through the last stitch here. And I just have a little tiny swatch so that I could save time so I can show you. And we're going to fold it in half, matching the short ends. And then we're going to seam across here. So um, I have seen, I have folded in half. I'm looking at the right side here. When I fold it in half, I'll be looking at the wrong side and that way I'll be making my seam on the wrong side and then I'll flip it around for wearing on the right side. Okay, so we're just going to match up stitch for stitch here. There's lots of different ways to seam 
and you know this one doesn't require any particular seaming methods so if you want to use a whip stitch you can do that which is just going over over and over and over you can even not seam it and use your hook and just slip stitch these together um, I'm going to show you a version of the mattress stitch all right so first to start with a locking stitch where I go under both loops of this stitch and match it up to that one there and then I'm going to go back through that same spot being sure not to pull it too tight because it will you know bunch the yarn and whatnot so now you can do a couple of things here you can go and just pick up these middle loops and do that or you can go under both loops on both sides which is my personal preference because I don't like how stretchy it becomes when you just have one it pulls a lot there but again seeming a lot of it is personal preference now I've got them all kinds of wonky so I'm just going to match up and go under these two and the two across so let me get that lined up there and we're just going to zigzag back and forth all the way across here now these is this part is our starting chain so there will be a a flimsier piece there but that is um, another reason I like the uh, working in the back bump of the starting chain is because what's left here looks like a stitch right it's our top two of the chain that we normally or at least how I first learned to work into and that makes the seaming bit easy and I feel like actually working into the back bump is easier because you're only trying to fuss with that one loop. So Now let's say for some reason I got off on my stitching and this, um, or if I'm working one of those patterns where the same number, uh, the starting chain isn't the same number of stitches you could just double up, right? You could pick this one up and then go back into one you've already gone in and you won't notice it. If you did too many like that or too far away, then you would notice it, but just one here or there is not going to make a difference. These are just loose uh, because again, they're chains versus actual top of stitches, but our seaming is gonna get it all matched up and neat. Okay, so it does look like I ran out of stitches versus chains. Looks like I have one more. I don't know if that's because I missed it or it's just a different count. I don't remember, but I can just pick up that last bit here and make sure that it's attached. I can do it to the bottom of that one. I can do it to the top. I'm going to do it back into the top. And then we are going to do a locking stitch on the end. Now, this isn't like a super secure walking stitch it's just a loop around so we have to make sure we weave that in really well okay so that will be your last step to weave it in I'm gonna turn my tiny tube here so you can see what the the seam looks like all together so there you go that's the seam obviously your cowl is going to be full length and not this little tiny tube but I just wanted to show you how to seam it and then we'll weave away those ends and I have a video on that so I won't do that here for you but I'll link it up for you basically when you're weaving ends you want to bury them deep you want to zigzag back and forth kind of make a square 
and weave them away so that there's no chance washing or tugging or anything will have them come loose. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed making this cowl pattern, and uh, I'd appreciate it if you stop by the blog, leave me a like, subscribe, leave me a comment about what kind of yarn you're using. I'd love to see your finished projects, too.